Well, hey, good evening, everybody. It is Rocked on Detroit Lions. And uh, I am Will Rock, and we are here talking about Matthew Betts. Brad Holmes, the genius, has done it again. And I've listened to a few people talk about the signing. So I figured what a better way to do this than just to go live. Now, I'm going to wait a few moments and wait for some people to jump in. Uh, we'll see if we can get some get some action tonight. I know it's not a typical night, but we're going to start adding some more nights anyway. So I figured why not? Let's do it. Let's talk about Matthew Betts. And I put something together for you guys. I put together about a three and a half minute video. And, and that's why I want to wait for a few more people to come in is I'm going to premiere it just for you guys. And it's just his highlights, but I cut it up. I added some notes and then we'll, we'll talk about it after. Um, and the reason why is because some of the things that I've heard from others is that they think he's too small. They don't think he's good enough plays in the Canadian football league. None of that matters. It, it really doesn't, but he's not too small. He's actually almost right in that target zone that we were just talking about last night. Height and weight is, is almost on the mark. Now we don't know, you know, how accurate his height and weight are. I've seen six, two and a half and six, three. I've seen two fifty five and two sixty five. 257 and 265. So when the Lions get him in house and, and, you know, we see what they put out, then we'll know. Uh, at least we'll have a better idea. I, I think everybody knows and understands that these teams will over glorify, you know, a, a little bit height and weight. At least they do in the college ranks all the time. Those guys are never on target. Remember Bryce Young was listed as six foot and he was barely, uh, <laughs> Barely 5'10 or 5'9 or something like that. So, all right. So I got a three and a half minute video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I put a little music to it. I hope it's not too loud. Uh, but if it is, obviously just turn down your, your volume because I'm not talking through this video. It's just some cut up highlights of Matthew Betts. If you haven't had a, a chance to watch him, this guy's special. Uh, he's got some special qualities about him. I'm not saying that he's a lock, but he's darn near... Um, one of the best pass rushers I've seen in a while. And we'll see how it translates to the NFL. I mean, it, it, big step, huge step. Uh, but what's up to everybody in the chat so far? El Tori, good evening. Bruce Morton, uh, Mike P, Rick Grit, Tracy. What's happening, people? Appreciate you guys joining me tonight. And everybody else that hasn't popped into the chat, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't. But here we go with the video. I'll be off to the side here watching along with you guys.
All right. Tell me what you guys think. I caught it up in about an hour and a half. I spent a little bit more time than I usually do, but man, this guy's got some traits. I love it. I love the signing. Uh, and, and to Steve's point there, it is CFL level play. Uh, and we do got to keep that in mind, but he shines above all the rest. And there's some big tackles he's going up. I mean, some monsters in the CFL. A lot of those guys, I mean, they're, they're bigger than what you're going to see in the NFL. Um, yes, impressive is a perfect word. He has great speed. And, and, and maybe we should go over some of it. And I could bring it back up and we could go through some of it. Matter of fact, I'm going to because there's there's something in here I want to show you. I want everybody to really key in on. I don't know if this is going to let me rewind. Oh, yeah, it will. Um, Back it up just a little bit. Give me just a second. All right. This is what really turned me on to him right here. So the reason why I dove in on this one is because he's got his hand in the dirt. Great balance. Uh, and you see that because his hand comes up. Let me play it. His hand will come up. Matter of fact, let me turn the volume off to that so I can talk through it. All right, so now his hand is up, and he's starting his launch. And if you you watch the plane of his back, he is still flat. Ladder, or you know, Horizontally, his back is flat. He's starting to launch towards the offensive line. And then in the next slide, he's fully launching before that ball is snapped. So he's got great pre-snap judgment, you know, and awareness and when this ball is going to get snapped. He's reading everything perfectly. But it's his launch before the snap that gets him into the backfield quickly. So he goes into full extension. Next slide here. Bang. And just look how balanced he is. Most of us, if, if I try to do that, I'd fall flat on my face, right? This guy is an athletic freak. I, and, and CFL or not CFL, he's still an athletic freak. And this play just really turned me on to his ability because you look at how he just shreds that, that offensive tackle. I mean, he's massive. That tackle's got to be six, seven, three hundred fifty 350 pounds. So that was that was the the biggest play that that I could find out of all of his and and when he's splitting pairs too he has no issues dicing through you know double teams first power contact I mean all of them I mean his first his first contact with heavy hands uh knocking that tackle back the way that he did that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for that kind of violence in in the NFL and in in physicalness I guarantee you Brad Holmes is getting a hard on watching that tape. Um, Robert says, remember the CFL plays a yard off the ball too. So he could be in the backfield even quicker. Man, that is such a great quote, buddy. Great perception, Robert. Um, I can't even say that I would have brought that up tonight. But that's, that's, I mean, that that tells you something. His arms, he's got like 32 and three quarter inch arms. They're close. Now, if you remember last night when I went through my perfect defensive end, and I'm going to bring it up again and show you guys because whoever's trying to say that this guy is too small, they don't know what they're doing. This is exactly why I do these things. Let me uh, dial it in for you guys so you can make sure you see it a little bit better. There we go. Is that better? Um. So he's six three, six two and a half to six three, right? Hey, Eric Parker, thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. Um, so let's look at all the guys that are six three in this list. Micah Parsons. Oh, he's taller than Hassan Reddick. Matthew Judon, Alex Highsmith. So I mean, there's three, four, what five guys or so in the top fifteen, and then everyone else is in that six four range. So he's he's not small. 257 pounds ish, 257, 265 is what we're seeing. Well, let's look at who's in that weight. Nick Bosa, Micah Parsons, TJ Watt, Max Crosby. He's bigger than Hassan Reddick, Brian Burns, Alex Highsmith, Daniil Hunter, Josh Sweat, Josh Allen, 
So he's not too small. I think that he's more of an outside linebacker with his speed. I dare I say that he could compete with James Houston. I see a lot of similarities between him and James Houston. The difference is I see uh, Matthew Betts having more power. And just that tenacious, relentless pursuit that he that he has. I mean, the guy, he's got a motor on him, man. Whatever your favorite engine is on a vehicle, that's what he's got. Um, Derek says, "I love, I love it. I was hoping that they would have signed him before the playoff run. You know, you got to remember too. He um he played in the NFL in 2019, so he, I think he came out of out of college, out of university, whatever it is. In maybe it was uh." somewhere in Canada. Um, he went to the Bears as an undrafted in 2019. Didn't make it after training camp. So he didn't make the practice squad. He did not make the 53, obviously. So there's a little bit of tape on him from back then. I have not looked at any of the preseason games yet. But you're talking about a guy that, that posted 42 tackles, 18 sacks, four forced fumbles this last season. His best season of his career so far. Um, 18 sacks broke a league record for the Canadian born player or for a Canadian born player. So they must differentiate in the CFL where you're from and, and what the records, I don't know if they're attached to where you're from. I'm not real sure. Um, but he spent a couple of seasons in Edmonton and then obviously 2020, the season was canceled due to COVID. And then he moved on to the BC lions the last two seasons. Uh, the Bears did sign Betts as an undrafted free agent in 2019, but like I said, he failed to make uh, make it out of training camp. So let me move over to another. Uh, there was another article that there was a couple more things that they pointed out. Uh, let me find it here. Okay, so prior to his professional career. Betts had spent uh, four seasons at the university level with the Laval Rouge uh, at Tour. Probably just butchered that. I apologize. Um, he was named Rookie of the Year in 2015. So his first year in at university level, he was Rookie of the Year posting 12 sacks in eight regular season games. And then upon his con you know, his con the conclusion of his university career, he was selected to play uh, in the 2019 East-West Shrine Bowl. Uh, he was uh, then drafted, like I said, by the, um, I'm sorry, he, then he was drafted third overall in the CFL draft that year, third, um, by Edmonton. But he initially signed with the Chicago Bears as an undrafted free agent. Look, I like this guy. I, he's, a, he's a great prospect. Um, this article had said that, you know, the Lions struggled to generate pressure on opposing quarterbacks last season. I, I don't know how that's true. Um, we got a lot of pressure, um, mainly Aiden Hutchinson, but we finished the season with double and Aiden finished the season with double digit sacks and Betts will join a defensive end room that features Aiden Hutchinson, John Kaminsky, Josh Pascal, and James Houston. So there, I don't know where the rest of this article went. I must've, I must've put it down, but there was some additional information, nothing real pressing. Um, but look, this guy's got an incredible motor. He, you guys seen the video. He's got all the attributes. He's tenacious. He's relentless. Uh, he's got he's got the size. He's got the power. He's got definitely has the speed. Uh, I think he's going to compete at a high level. I think he's going to surprise a few people. Now, here's the big question. Uh, there you go. Virgil Lyman says, Von Miller, 6'3", 249, same as Betts. There you go. Uh, thanks, Robert. Says it means uh, red and gold. Uh, Samuel Menino uh, says talent is talent. Um, Tracy says uh, he's going to complement the defense. I agree with all of that, but here's the looming question. Everyone's now wondering what Brad Holmes is about to do, right? Is he going to sign a big name guy or is he like some people like to say, Shopping at the dollar store. All the dollar stores is what I say. He shops at all of them. He's not impartial to any of them. So now he's reached across the pond, right? He's reached across the border. Let me get this off the screen. He's reached across the border now to find, uh, you know, a high value target 
uh, and someone that has really great talent. I mean, in- incredible talent. He he's just honed his craft the last four seasons, playing up north. He's still young at 28 years old. Uh, has not had the pounding of an NFL season, so he's still fresh. And like you know, Steve said, you know, he's playing in the CFL. Well. I would assume that means he's he's probably feeling a little bit better than most guys do after an NFL season is what I'm hoping. But as you've seen in some of those videos, man, those tackles are enormous. Slow, though. I mean, I think a lot of them were kind of slow. But he puts them on skates, like I said. You know, he, he gets them moving one way, he goes the other way. I've watched, you know, some of the other tape where, I mean, he's using three, four different pass rush moves. Swim. I never saw a spin once. Um swim chop uh bull rush you name it i mean the only the only spin that i saw i guess was on on the one where it was a big contact of you know where i put in their first contact big power where he pushed and then he kind of spun in but he was getting held i don't know if you guys caught that he was getting held otherwise he got off and got in right away so is brad holmes going to sign a big name guy that's the question. And I still think that there's room. I don't think that Brad Holmes is done. Obviously, he's not. Free agency hasn't really started yet. You know, you're not able to sign anybody just yet. But I do not believe that Brad Holmes is going to stand down. I think that he's going to evaluate the market. But I think it starts with bets. <clears throat> it starts with a guy that, you know, low cap, obviously. And, and someone that is going to come in to, to have to work hard. It's not like he's a shoe in He's going to have to work hard to make it. He's going to be under a microscope. Anything that he does wrong, you know, it's going to be amplified 10 times more than it would be for somebody else. So he really has to come in and, and show that he belongs. But I still believe that Brad Holmes is going to do something. I'm not as sold as some of the other people out there. And I know it's it's not... It's not good to talk about all the time because I don't want to sound like I'm Debbie Downer, but I really have a hard time seeing Brad spend 25 million on one guy. If he's already going to do that on Amon Ross St. Brown, and he's already going to do that on Panay Sewell, and he's going to double that on Jared Goff. And just this season alone is what we're expecting to happen. And if he does all three, I don't see him being able to go out and sign one $25 million guy. I think that he'll have to sign two or three, you know, that are seven, eight, 10, maybe $12 million guys. Spread it out, fill the roster, build the depth, have some game changers. I mean, the goal is what? I mean, what's our goal? Ladies and gentlemen, the goal is to get better, right? Improve, upgrade. That's it. We don't have to go and and knock, you know, home runs every time we step up to the plate. Sometimes we just need a single. Sometimes we just need to get on base. Yeah, it's great when you can hit a triple or a home run. Drive in a ribby, whatever. But Brad Holmes right now, he's, he's kind of playing this money ball like, okay, I need to upgrade. We had terrible time on the right side of the defense this season. How can I upgrade it? as least expensive as I can until free agency. And that's what he did today. Man, I'm almost out of the woods with all this sinus stuff. It just won't stop. Uh, Sports talk with Rob. Hey, man, been a minute. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, Wants to sign Burns from Carolina. I'm not as sold on Burns as everybody else. I, I think that And I'll get into him when I do a video here soon, but I'm just not as sold on him as I would be somebody else. Now, he's not going to cost as much as as some of these other guys, but um, the rumor that Sports Talk with Rob is hearing is that the Lions could trade a fourth-round pick for Khalil Mack. Wow. And have to absolve his contract? Yeah, I don't know. I'd rather have Max Crosby. But speaking of Max Crosby, I mean, when when you look at this guy, doesn't he kind of remind you a little bit of Max Crosby? Now, he's not covered in tats, but just that that tall, not lanky, but kind of long, looks long. I mean, Max looks extra long, but 
um, high motor, man. I mean, when I think of a, a high motor defensive end, Max Crosby is the first thing that comes to mind. His body is always working and, and he's just tenacious about it. So, uh, Mike P says this dude is quick as a cat length wingspan, like his frame. Yeah. Um, Derek says time to get Josh Allen and Jalen Johnson. See, that's where I'm at. Derek is I'm stuck on Jalen Johnson. I think that Brad Holmes would rather address the the biggest need in the room, which is the secondary for the second season in a row. Like we were adequate on the defensive line, right? We could stop the run. My question is who are we going to change up on the defensive front that is now going to impact the run game? That's what I'm worried about. And I haven't dove into the stats just yet to see who was the best guy men uh, against the run. Right. And really evaluate who the lions are probably going to keep just based on that. When you know that you're in a, you know, a rundown, you're more than likely going to want to keep those guys in the game, which means you're going to need to keep them on the team because you can't afford to give up one or the other. It's either if you give up the run game and you get rid of a couple of guys that were really good, you know, at stopping the run, then, then what are we going to do? That's kind of going backwards. Like we have to build upon that, build upon that strength. You know, you dial it up with the secondary. You got to get the secondary to shut down the pass. Then your defensive ends and your defensive tackles can work. Um, Gregory Zen, we don't have a fourth round pick. Maybe it's a 2025, maybe not a 2024. That's right. We have two thirds this year. No fourth. A first, a second, two thirds, a fifth, a sixth, and a seventh, I believe. Um, Steve Case's better pass rush brings a better pass coverage. Yeah, I mean they go hand in hand, right? If if one is is good, the other one is kind of good by nature. You know, if you got great shutdown corners, makes your defensive front look like all stars. Vice versa, you know, defensive front are really good. You can get by, you know, with some average DBs. Um, Sports Talk with Rob confirmed 2025 fourth round pick. That would make more sense. Uh, Peter Charles Braley says he should go after a second tier DT and cornerback, free agents, and then draft a cornerback, defensive end, two guards, and a kicker, and maybe a wide receiver. I'm on board with a lot of that. And Peter, man, you you changed your name again. What happened? You have Southwest sixteen, Southwest two six, and now Peter Braley. Is that? I mean, yeah, I assume that you're the same person, right? Um, and that's where I'm at. I th again, I think that Brad Holmes is going to look at the free agent market a little bit harder when it comes to the DBs. Let's let's pull that up for just a moment. I know I'm getting off topic of Matthew Betts, but this is what happens when you go live. You just start talking. Um, do me a favor. If you guys like the video that I put together and premiered with you, do me a favor and hit that like button. Let's let everybody else see it too. Only took me an hour and a half to do it. All right. So top free agent cornerbacks. Let's take a look. We know that Jalen Johnson is obviously at the top of the board. Let me pull this in for you guys. Uh, and also do me the favor and let me know when I bring this stuff in and bring it back out, does it get grainy? Does it start to get a little stuttery? I don't know why it's doing that, but it is. Hopefully when I upgrade to this new, uh, this new software, I mean, the software I use is great, but when I upgrade to this new one, Derek turned me on to it. Should be should be better. All right. So Jalen Johnson is the number one overall cornerback. Demigod late again, man. So you missed the premiere, buddy. But good for you, good news for you guys. Uh, I believe I have it set to premiere again at seven thirty. It won't be labeled a premiere. It'll be uploaded as a video, and it's the highlight video that I put together for uh, Matthew Betts, and it includes my cut ups and a few things that I pointed out about what I saw and uh, got the um, highlights obviously off of the internet. So Jalen Johnson, 
wasn't quite able to have the third year breakout in 2022 that he had hoped for uh, as nagging injuries kept him off the field for several stretches. Uh, he and the team were unable to find common ground on an early extension. It was those ads. What ads? My ads? They popping up or something? Oh. Johnson continued to push for a new deal uh, right up to requesting a trade at the deadline this year. Uh, but after conversations with, with other teams, Chicago elected to keep him around. Uh, now with edge defender Montez Sweat extended and franchise tag freed up, another negotiation looks to be on the horizon. So do we think the Bears keep him? Does he stick around? Is he not going to be on the open market? Yeah, see, Klaus 2-1. I have a really nice gaming laptop with a RTX 4060 in it. I would hope that's not the problem, but I am going to upgrade um, and build a brand new PC this spring. That I'm excited about. Next one up is Legarius Le Le Sneed, uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Now, we know what happens when Super Bowl teams win um, or when teams win the Super Bowl. Sorry. Those players often are go, they'll go head hunting for money. So I expect, you know, Sneed to go out and look for some big payday. And, and the Chiefs are going to have a hard time re-signing everybody that's a free agent. It happens every single season with a Super Bowl winner. That is why it's so difficult to get back. Because they'll end up losing a lot of players. Um, but as far as Sneed, I mean, his single coverage grade is a 47-7. Uh, forced incompletion percentage is 13.3. Coverage grade uh, on throws throws in less than three seconds is a 69.9 and coverage grade without pressure is a 71.5 that's pretty darn good let's look at Jalen Johnson quite a bit different um, single coverage grade is a 68.5 his forced incompletion rate is 3.4% better at 16.7 coverage grade on throws under three seconds 90.1 Coverage without pressure, 86.8. That dude's sticky. Like, that's that's sticky, sticky. Wow, YouTube made you watch a 90-second? That's crazy. Time to buy premium, man. I, I select, the, like, the minimum, minimum uh, ads. Maybe I'll start doing no ads for the live stream. And then put the ads on, you know, or the monetization on after the fact. I don't know how that affects anything. I, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but maybe I'll ask somebody. All right. So the next cornerback, Kendall Fuller, Washington Commanders. Um, he's got really great uh, grades too. 87.4, uh, no pressure. 85.2 in under three seconds. Not as many forced incompletions. Single coverage grade isn't half bad. Sports talk with Rob says, I would give Sneed the same type of contract as Sutton. I wouldn't break the bank for him, though. I think that's uh, a good way to roll right there. If Look, if we can get you know a, a lockdown, and I know you guys, I, I, I use that term loosely. We need a, a major upgrade. Let me say that. We need a major upgrade, someone that can come in and be a true number one and send you know Cam Sutton uh, you know, over to CB2. And if we can get someone to come in to do that for less than 15 million a year, I think that Brad Holmes would do it all day. So that's the question. Is Kendall Fuller or Sneed going to do it for less than 15 million? This next guy, uh, Awuzi, uh, he's in the, he's the 26th free agency rank. Let's read, let's read about Awuzie. So Awuzie was one of a series of slam dunk free agent acquisitions for the Bengals over the past few years, providing the team with a bona fide number one outside corner for just $7.25 million. Awuzie tore his ACL in 2022, and the Bengals have used four day two picks on defensive backs over the past two draft classes. Um which signals um, that he should be testing out free agency once again. 
He returned to form nicely in 2023, though. So that, that's good news. You know, coming back from an ACL, especially as a cornerback, it's, it's tough to come back um, and, and feel, you know, have that confidence. So it's it's good to hear that he came back. Um, Debbie God says, I'm going to be honest. I feel like you're giving Cam Sutton a pass because in Pittsburgh, he played like a true number one. Uh, I thought in Pittsburgh, he was the number two. Could have sworn he was. Maybe I'm wrong, but. As far as Cam Sutton goes, he is the number two. I, I don't I don't believe that Cam is the number one in this league. I really don't. He doesn't have the length uh, or the speed to hang with these guys. I mean, we've seen it all season. He he I don't think he got credited for everything that you know he allowed, but he uh he's not trash. I'm not saying he's trash. I just feel like we need a true number one. And and our DBs would be incredible with Cam Sutton as the number two and Brian Branch down in the nickel. Uh, and I don't care who is our, any one of our safeties over top, as long as it's not Tracy Walker. Stephen, Stephen Gilmore. Look, I, he's too old for me. 33. Well, how old is he? 30, something like that. Um, I'm going to pass on Gilmore. Steven Nelson. I don't know how old he is either. But look, there's options here. So out of all of these options, the Dory Jackson, Nixon from Green Bay, Sean Murphy bunting. So, and he's compared to Eli Apple. I know some people don't like Eli Apple. So there's options here. So I think that Brad Holmes is going to try to find us a cornerback. Now, I think that if he's really wanting to do us a solid it's going to be Kendall Fuller, Sneed, or Jalen Johnson. I just don't think that we're going to be able to get Jalen Johnson less than $18 million. Probably pushing closer to twenty. Am I Am I wrong for thinking that? And, uh, yeah, we do have the younger Gilmore. I don't need another, you know, brother duo on the team. Like, I'm not interested in the stories, you know what I mean? Like, I'm more interested in the wins, and I want to see this team make it to the next, uh, you know, the next mountaintop, which is ho hoisting a Lombardi trophy in Detroit. Town will go nuts. Um, Jones will get tagged. Who's Jones? What am I missing, buddy? Jones. You're talking about Johnson? Jalen Johnson. So anyway, um, we'll get back to Matthew Betts for just a moment here. Uh, look, guys, I'm excited about him. Yeah, there we go, Ronan. Uh, Jalen Johnson, yes. He he could get tagged. I mean, like they were just saying, I was reading it, you know, with the, the tag being open for the Bears. Uh, they have early picks. Um I doubt that they wasted on a cornerback. I think that they're going to be going after a quarterback. They could also shop, you know, Justin Fields and bring in more picks. And then Jalen Johnson could be on his way. If they bring in more picks by trading Justin Fields, then all bets are off. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the Bears do. But I have a feeling that the Bears are going to be right on our heels. And I think the Packers are going to be right on our heels. So Brad Holmes has to knock it out of the park. Um, and back to Matthew Betts, look, I think that Brad Holmes made a very wise decision today in giving this guy an, an option to prove that he can do it in the NFL. He didn't work out for the Chicago Bears. So what? You know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. He just went and had an incredible career in the CFL. Let's see if he can turn on the Jets in the NFL for the Detroit Lions and, uh, It'd be nice for him to match up against the Bears and show the Bears they made a big mistake. You know, I think that I think that if if we're gonna do it, this is the time to do it. You know, this is the time to bring in a guy like that that's gonna be a little bit raw, right? He's gonna need he's gonna need this offseason to really get right uh and get, you know, right into the training. And that's what I'm expecting of this guy. I'm expecting for him to be an Allen Park like yesterday and ready to go and ready to learn and take it to the next level. 
if he's the kind of guy that we think he is because he's a Brad Holmes guy, he's a, you know, he's a Dan Campbell guy. Like I said this morning, I expected the signing today. And that's exactly what I said. He's a Brad Holmes guy and a Dan Campbell guy to a T. And he is. I, so I would expect for him to, to get in and get ready and get going and, and prove us all right or wrong um, that he's going to be something in the NFL. I think that, you know, to your point, Ronan, yes, the freakish length, it's his freakish ability. Um, Brad Holmes needs to hit at least on one cheap guy that's going to stand out this year in free agency. That way we can, you know, the Lions can spread the money around and continue to bring in high value targets that can, you know, change the game. And that's what we need. It's a couple of game changers. Um, not a fan of young. Ronan, I'm, I'm not following you there. Sports Talk with Rob says, go all out on the D-line. The more we can get to the quarterback, the more our DBs can perform. A thousand percent true. Should almost make a shirt that says like D-line equals DBs and, you know, like an arrow, DBs equals D-line because it's, it's like a circle of unity, man, it, you know, or that whatever that one thing is called, I forget. Um, the free agent market is not complete yet. The Browns are six mil under cap while the Broncos are 23 mil over the cap. The other day I did a video uh, about a week and a half ago, I think now where I highlighted the five losers of free agency. You had the dolphins, the saints, the Broncos, um, who else was in there? But you had, you have teams right now that are 60, 40, 25 million over the cap. So there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be shedding players, can't resign players, can't go out and do anything in free agency. Yeah, they'll get a bunch of restructures done. They have to get under the cap before the league year ends. And, and when they do, you're going to see a lot of players sit for agency to uh, Peter's point here is the free agency market is not set. It's not done. There's still a lot of players that are going to be available. Um, the Ronin 699 says, I love the Darius Robinson and uh, defensive end. Oh, yeah, Ruka Roro. I can't even say his last name. Roro. Ro. Um, and Tavon, Tavon De Sweat. Yeah, Sweat is, is right now. He's high on my list. I'm going to be doing a video about him probably tomorrow. And I love his freakish ability, man. He he reminds me um, in Dominic and Sue type anger at, at the point of contact. And I think true Lions fans know what I mean. Like Sue was heavy handed, vicious with the first contact. Like that's where it all happens in the NFL. If you don't win the first contact, it's a battle. If you, if you win the first contact, you're making your life much easier. And that's where these guys got to get heavy handed and work on their hand fighting. Uh, Jonathan, Jonathan M says, go Lions 24. All right, so I'm going to end this here in just a few moments. But before I do, if you guys think the Lions are going to go to the Super Bowl in 2024, do us all a favor, smash the like button. Because I do. I predicted it on the, you know, uh, during the Super Bowl or when the Super Bowl ended that the Lions are going to the Super Bowl in 2024. I believe it. I think that Dan Campbell was spot on when he corrected himself after the NFC title game. Yeah, it's hard to get back. Yeah, it sucks. It stings. And he was he was hurt. You know, he was full of emotion. But I think that he was right in correcting himself that it's Super Bowl or bust. No matter what it takes, this team is going back. And I think that no matter what it takes has to include keeping your offensive line together as much as possible. I think that I'd rather see Graham stay and Jonah go. Uh, I think that Doing everything that it takes means you have to go out and, and solidify the, the DB room. You have to. You have to bring in another number one corner. Let Cam and this new guy fight for it. You have to supplement through the draft. You've got to find a defensive end uh, that can get to the quarterback. I don't care about pressure. I care about getting to the quarterback. TFLs, you know, tackling the running back in the backfield. That's the kind of stuff that will change games. Pressure is a number. 
That's it. It's just a number on a stat sheet that says you were close, but you didn't get home. What's the old saying? Um, uh, what about horseshoes and hand grenades or something? I don't know, but close doesn't do it for me. You can't get close. You got to get there. Um, there you go. Sports Talk with Rob says, forget it. We win it all. Forget just going. Robert H says, too bad we could have not signed or not given Stafford an O-line like we have now. I think he had a pretty good O-line, but it's definitely not what it is today. Um, Jonathan says, love your poster in the back. Lions 1934. I have the same one. We are going to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl or bust, Ronan 99. The Ronan 99 says, glad I caught you. Uh, love your show. Appreciate it, man. Much appreciated. And who else do we got? Make those shirts. Sports talk with Rob says make those shirts. I might. Who knows? I got to put the store back up. I put it to bed for a little while. Google screwed me, man. They tried to say like something wasn't right on my site or something. I don't know. But you know how tough it is to get in touch with people at Google and actually get things worked out? It's insane. It's pointless. I can't stand Google. All right. Any other last comments on Matthew Betts? Uh, here's what I'll say. Or here's what I'll ask. How many of you guys think that he has an outside chance of making the 53? And how many of you think that he has a chance, like a real chance, that he's going to make the 53? I should have pulled up the YouTube. Uh, you know what? Let me do it real quick. I'll pull up the, the other chat. I'll put a poll up real quick. All right. Matthew Betts makes the 53 man. If you were to if you were to bet on it today. Here we go. Poll is up. Right now, I think he has an outside chance until I see him at training camp. Hoping he's still there at training camp. You know, Brad Holmes could go nuts in the next, you know, six to nine weeks here. Bring in a bunch of guys. Totally change everything. Uh, but keep that in mind, too. You know, as we keep sprinting forward to the new league year and the new season opinions are going to change a lot more, you know, a lot more information is going to come out. That's why some people do like seven or eight mock drafts. I only do a couple. Uh, my last one will come out on the day before the draft. I do a live show the day before and the day of during the draft. I do the entire draft, but um, I try to put out my, my last one the day before I do it live and we talk about it. But, between now and then, I'll put out a couple. What I really need to do is I need to go back and find last year's mock drafts that I put on Facebook. Because you guys are going to you're gonna be like, yeah, right. Like, you really called all those. And I did. So, I got to get it for you guys and show you that we do the work here at Rock Down Podcast Network. We, we try to give you guys the best content we can. Honest opinions. And you guys are always the best supporters and sponsors of this channel. And we certainly appreciate uh, everything that you you do for us just by showing up. I mean, even in a last minute, you know, live pop up tonight, we had over a hundred people in at one point, and and that's that's amazing. So I really appreciate the support, all the new people that found Rock Down Podcast Network. Just so you guys know, the name is going to change a little bit. It's going to change so that it's more of a Lions channel. Rock Down Podcast Network is going to go to its own channel, and and then we'll develop all the playlists so you'll have all the teams under their own you know, individual channel to kind of keep it set, you know, separated. So better the hunt says, Hey, I bet he makes it looks like a stud player. And Robert H says, anyone who can go to the East West shrine game is a blue tripper. That, that's a good point too. Uh, sports talk with Rob says, I, I thought just going to the NFC championship was good enough until we lost. I want it all now. You know, what's crazy is, you know, this morning, uh, Rob, I don't think you were, were you in this morning? I'm not real sure if you were, but 
watching the Super Bowl, I, I knew that the Lions would have been a much better game. Much better game. And 123 mil, pfft, Lions would have posted 150 million people watching that thing. Guaranteed, hands down. They'll do it this year. And the NFL knows it. So when they're writing their script right now, I guarantee you the Lions are built into it somewhere. Uh, and as far as, you know, having primetime games, I guarantee the Lions have at least three primetime games this year. At least. They made the NFL a ton of money, and I hate to, to put it to money, but unfortunately, if you want your team to get places, you got to make the NFL money. And then they try to reward you with those things. They saw a glimpse of it, you know, at the end of the 2022 season when the Lions were on this, this crazy, you know, rise through the NFL, winning games left and right, and then knocking out the Packers. And they, they watched how, you know, incredible uh, the fan base turned out and in watching. I mean, some of the highest watched games last season were the Lions games. I think that they were third out of all the games, even uh, the Super Bowl. I think they were third, which is crazy. So, uh, oh, Ludell Wesley says, I just want Johnny Wilson. I watched him today, and I have to tell you, I'm in your boat. Johnny Wilson, 6'7", 230. The guy you would think, couldn't run because he's so tall. Very fluid. Very, very fluid. Very interesting prospect. Uh, red zone threat. I mean, times 10. This guy's going to stand back there like a flagpole. Uh, he doesn't even have to jump for balls. He looks, yeah, he looks darn good. Um, The official day to start the new season. So the new league year, I'm not, I, you know, I don't know that date by heart, but I, I know that free agency is March 13th. I can look it up for you real quick, though. I don't know if those are the same days. I think that they could be. Um, yeah, free agency and the new league year are the same day, March 13th. And 52 hours before that is when you can start to flirt with players and, and start working on a deal uh, before free agency day actually happens. So 52 hours before that's when this channel is going to be stuck in this chair for pretty much 52 hours straight trying to put out content because it's going to be like, you know, fire and fury for 52 hours straight. And then the 52 hours after that, and then it'll slow down. It's going to be nuts, especially this year with the lions. Yeah, the script versus KC again would have been amazing. I, I believe it. Eminem is writing the next script. Yeah, that he's sending his henchmen in to go talk to uh, Roger Goodell. Hydrate up. All right. All right, well, that's all for tonight. I appreciate you all jumping in. Um, Thursday, Rise and Grind Morning Show at Rockdown Syndicate on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be streaming it to a couple channels temporarily remember at the end of this month or by the new league year at least um that's when it's going to fall off and it's going to be at rock down syndicate only so do us a favor and subscribe over there that's where you're going to get the morning show with Derek and i and lion syndicate and look we're going to be growing it to more days too so it's eventually going to be five days a week Derek may not be on for every single day but we're going to grow it to five days a week so that we can start pumping some morning content to you. And, and I have a feeling free agency is going to help us get there because there's going to be a lot of content coming out to share and it's tough to get it in, you know, in two, three nights a week. So we've got to get it in, you know, eight times a week to get you guys all the news. There'll be one hour shows more than likely a couple, two hour shows. And then as we add more people and bring in, um, you know, like more guests, it'll start getting a little bit longer. So that's all for today. Uh, Ronan 99 says, Derek is my guy. There you go. Great show. El Tori. Appreciate it. What time? 830 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time at Rockdown Syndicate. Here, I'll, uh, I'll pop it up for you real quick. I'm sure I've got a little, little ticker. My mouse just died. That's always fun. All 
There you go. Bottom of the screen at Rocked On Syndicate on YouTube. Rise and Grind Morning Show. So, Matthew Betts, welcome to Detroit. Uh, you better believe I've already reached out to your people trying to get you on the show. So, if you happen to see this, you can email me at info at rockedonpodcastnetwork.com. We'd love to have you on. I'm sure all these fans would love to get to know you. Some of the most dedicated, awesome fans. Actually, you know, they are the most dedicated, awesome fans in the NFL. We are. So, that's all for tonight. I appreciate you all. Go on pride, go Detroit Lions. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. I forgot my mouse died. Now bye-bye.